Good afternoon and welcome once again to my daily share, inspirational chat, talk, something like that. Um, today we're episode number 662 and the topic today is really present for me and the topic is the power of your subconscious mind is no joke. Um, I mean the power of your subconscious mind is the name of a book I believe but it came through as a reminder because that's what I've been working through the last few days. So today I thought it was time to talk about it. For my own example, but also maybe as an education and a reminder for yourself that maybe there's some things you can work on as well. So if you don't want to look at it, your own stuff, your own subconscious mind, don't watch this broadcast. <laughs> Before I jump that, into that though, let me introduce myself so you know who I am or what I'm about, and then I'll explain what this is about. So my name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and help women create balance in love, life, and business because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine. That's also what inspired these talks over two years ago called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. And pop me that she knows. <laughs> Excuse me. And so today we're at episode 662. And the topic again today is the power of the subconscious mind is no joke. Um, and it, that's for real. Um, I'm going to share, I'm, gonna, I'm not sure how much I'm going to share about this. I did write a whole post earlier today from the realizations I've had over the last few days, and particularly this morning, how it just clicked into place, of two deep-seated, automatic, programmed, um, or sort of say automatic pilot, programmed subconscious beliefs that I've been running since I was a lot younger, that were interfering with my business, and, and also interfering with money. So I, sh I probably will explain, just to give you the, the, the gist of it, because the thing is, I want to teach you something, using my own life as an example, about how the wiring you run, I should say the way, sorry, let me, let me say another way. Your subconscious mind is running your life. Ta-da, surprise. Okay, that's gonna sound really good. But the reality about that is that there are things happening in your life that you may not be able to explain and there are things happening in your life that may not be going the way you want. And that was kind of my aha that started my self-investigation. So I'm gonna tell you what happened for me in awareness level stuff and probably keep it brief because I did a whole write-up on it on my Facebook wall. So if you want to read about it, it's on my Facebook page. Uh, but I'll explain it in the Cliff Notes version here, I think. We'll see. And then offer some suggestions about what you can do for working with your own perhaps internalized automatic pilot that you're running that is getting you off track of where you want to go. So, first of all, two things that came up for me. I should say two um, I mean, they're beliefs. It's, it's like, they're, they're two I, no, I, not icons, wrong word. <laughs> there were two things that happened for me, or two realizations I had that really shifted my awareness, blew me wide open, in fact. And I knew, and the funny thing is, I knew about these two already. I mean, they're not things I didn't know about, but I didn't know how they got so into, um, not the right word, how they got so invested in my life that they were running automatically behind the scenes and causing my life not to go the way I wanted. Yes, I'm being transparent here. Um, I've been on the entrepreneurial path, shall we say, for the last eight, 10 years in this particular format. I've done other things before that, but this particular format. And simply put, it hasn't been my most successful journey, financially speaking. I've had a lot of success in terms of visibility and other things, but at the same time, it hasn't moved me forward. And let me explain what I'm talking about in my own journey. So two things that happened when I was a lot younger um, that were running as beliefs inside of me, and I'm going to speak about them as old beliefs that no longer function to make sure I word it right for myself. I'm just watching how I'm going to say these things. First of all, I had a belief running from child, I think from childhood, let's say even teen years, that it was imprinted and installed in me, I think by my dad especially, but also by my mother and by the people around me was that basically to make money in the world, you had to have a full-time job. The way the world was set up, the only way to make money was to have a full-time nine to five, 40 hour week paying job as an employee of somebody else. That's the way it was, black and white. And no other choices available. That's the way I saw it as a youngster. Even though I did make money as a kid, you know, being a um, newspaper boy, riding my bike and living newspapers. So I didn't know there was a freelance thing but it wasn't referencing real money, that was just a hobby. But to make real money, you have to permanent job, get employed by somebody else and be paid. That was the rules in my head. So that's one of the runs I was running. The other one that I didn't realize until, actually yesterday, 
No, today, this morning, because I've been working on this for the last couple of days solid, was a belief I was running from something happening when I was younger in my childhood, which was there was a rift in my family um, that basically was a life-changing one. My family and some other parts of my father's side of the family had a, a rift, a split that never got healed. I was probably 14 at the time, give or take. And basically what happened, now just so you know transparently, I'm, I'm as I said before in other broadcasts, I'm, in, I'm English in case, you hadn't, <laughs> in case you hadn't figured it out. I'm in fact from East London, or just outside of East London. And as far as I'm concerned, I was raised working class. And in England, the class structure, especially when I was a kid, was still somewhat in place. My father's side of the family had had run the belief that they were middle class and there was this class um, derision from looking down from middle class onto working class and what it felt like was being heavily judged for not having the money that I was supposed to have had to be middle class there was some wiring in there and what it came to when it came down to was as I looked at money because of what, this is what they had and the privilege it gave them as ugly I looked at money as the position they held as judgmental, um, demeaning, um, superior from a le from a listed point of view. So I was carrying these beliefs inside that money was negative because of what I saw with my in-laws, my, my, my dad's family, not in-laws, that wasn't me. It was anyway, so those two beliefs combined to make it really hard, not realizing, and again, not realizing this until very recently, makes it really hard to be an entrepreneur speaker, teacher, coach, out in the world on my own, doing my own thing, and making lots of money, don't match those two beliefs, as you might have guessed. So I had been battling against that, like pushing up against a, a ceiling, so to speak, because these rules were being run. And the rules are running, as I said, in subconscious mind. Again, subconscious mind is no joke, or I should say the power of it. And the funny thing is, I'm not the only one who has a subconscious mind, so do you. We all have subconscious minds. It's kind of part of the makeup of being a human being. Surprise, surprise. And so what we do is we carry wiring, beliefs, programming, having put that in our mind, that gets put in early on that we don't even become aware of. And now I'm, we don't become aware of and we don't do anything about, because I want to be clear about this. Both of those situations I was fully aware of. I didn't, they weren't like buried in my memory that I never heard of them before. They weren't sort of hidden memories that I didn't even know about. Those were things I look back in my history and go, yes, that happened and that happened. But they never, re they never tied together in a way that made sense for where I was in my life now. That was the, the spark that changed everything. And I'm sitting in the, in the middle right now of some interesting feelings because I'm seeing a lot of shifting going on internally. Nothing's happened externally, by the way. This is all internal that's been going on. But having had some recent challenges with some business things going on for me personally, it was a chance to look back at my own self. My own self. One of the challenges, one of the one of the um, opportunities of being on this personal journey for so many years and doing this work. When something happens, it's a good chance to look inside to see. Okay, so what inside of me is out of alignment? What inside of me triggered that? Like if I had an altercation or an upset with somebody, or if there was a dis an issue in a relationship I have, or a dis problem with the, with the friendship or a business connection, if something isn't working. My first thought after the initial like. Huh? What happened there? Is what did what what happened inside of me? Like, what did I not do? What did I do? How did I not did I not react right? Did I what was I thinking? What was going on? That sort of thing. So when I had that issue short around business, I followed back into the thread and saw both the two different beliefs showing up in a different light than I'd seen them before. And to realize very clearly that making money as an entrepreneur wasn't even possible according to my young mind. Yes, that young mind of the Jedi that wasn't trained yet, wasn't aware that making money through being an entrepreneur was impossible according to the rules. And that having money wasn't a good thing. So why would I even make money? So those two things were fighting against me and really winning because the power of a subconscious mind is no joke, as I said, that it was impossible to succeed. That's been quite a wake-up call, because for me it's been really a shift of awareness, and it's been a chance to um, unpack, undo, rewire 
the program I've been carrying on for so long without even knowing about it. The thing about subconscious mind is it's not visible. Meaning that what you're thinking in your subconscious mind is not something you're consciously aware of. You don't see the thoughts in your, aware in, your life, in your awareness, although you see the results of those thoughts in your life. And that's the key. It's kind of like, um, oh, there's no fictional character that nobody could see, but you can see the results of what they did. It's gone, so I can't use it like that. That illustration isn't going to work. But it's the thing. You won't be able to see the workings of your subconscious mind. You will be able to see the results of what happened in your life. In my case, I became aware about my business was not working the way I wanted to up to this point, which is changing now because I've shifted some things for myself. For you, it might be something, it might be something similar, or maybe it's something to do with your relationships. Maybe you have a relationship track record that shows you certain experiences from repeated, repeat, repeated reminders of what's not working that if you really were to track it back, you'd find something that goes back to your subconscious programming. The influence of subconscious programming, the subconscious mind, the actions of your earlier programming that's running automatic pilot is absolutely 100% um, influencing everything in your life. It was influencing mine, and I'm sure there's other things I haven't come, up, come, come to yet because our subconscious mind is also very large. The power of subconscious mind is no joke, as I said. The way one of my teachers said a long time ago was that our subconscious mind is a magnitude, actually, it's a scale of magnitude that is a hundred to a thousand times more powerful than our conscious mind is. If you look at the fact that our mind, we only use about 10% of our minds, of our brains rather, that means 90% isn't being used. What if it is and it's just and it's largely subconscious mind? I said, you know, that's not real, that's not true, that's not biologically accurate. But it's that sort of, that sort of um, scale of difference. So when you say, I'm going to go do this, 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 and this, whether you do it by hoping or by intending, whatever you say, unless your subconscious mind is in alignment with it, you won't get there. And that's been one of the challenges I realized I was facing because I was noticing all the things I was, tr I was trying. Yes, I, I hate that word myself. All, the, all of these different things I was playing with to build my business, to make things happen, to market my products, to coach clients, to get more clients coming in. It isn't about the work. I know very clearly the work I do is high quality. I know that the clients, the coaching I do with my clients is beyond reproach. I know the programs and products I've created are effective and successful. But it was none of that was in the way. It was my subconscious mind. And it's that belief systems we, that are running in there, which shorthand is a friend of mine calls them, they're BS as in belief systems, just an interesting common out, uh, um, synchronicity of title. But the belief systems that I was running, that I now see more clearly, were absolutely running the show beyond my control. Doesn't matter what I said I was going to do, didn't matter what I attempted to do, didn't matter any discussions, conversations, connections, networks, anything I did would not have changed it because the subconscious programming was requiring certain results to happen. And my life would reflect that no matter what I tried. It's like having no wheels to get traction where someone's carrying you and you want to get traction, you can't get any traction. That's the way subconscious mind is. It's going, I'm going to take you over here. Even when you say, but I want to run over that direction, it doesn't work. So the only way, well, the steps, let me put it that way. The steps to change is first of all, become aware of the results you're having in your life that aren't working. That's the first thing to become aware of. Again, subconscious mind is invisible except by the evidence of what results you get. If your results in your life and this is my wheelhouse, in relationship are not what you want to get, I can pretty much guarantee you that's the imprint of your subconscious mind. When you are really, sorry, when you are willing and ready to change your results, then you're going to find someone who can help you who understands this. Because going to see a dating coach or a matchmaker who can just give you more dates and more, more experiences may give you things to fill your time, but it won't change your life. It won't change your wiring. So it doesn't matter who they put in front of you, you're still going to end up the same result. If that result isn't what you want, it's pretty much likely to be your subconscious mind is what's creating that impact. Thankfully, uh, for myself, I haven't. I have studied this stuff in my past, <laughs> but it was the presumption that I was doing okay that stopped me from actually looking at it. So when I, what suddenly was clear that it wasn't working, something was up. I was asking questions internally, which was, what am I believing that's in the way of what I want? And that, by the way, is a game-changing question to ask yourself, which is, what is it you're believing 
that's stopping you from getting what you want. Because that will start opening up the door to what the beliefs are. So when I asked the question to myself, what am I believing that's stopping me getting what I want? It took a few days because I was doing this as a self-investigation. I was doing other things. I wasn't sitting down focusing on it, which is a choice I made. The awareness came in about what these two things were. And again, if you want to read what I, you want to read what I wrote this morning on my Facebook wall, feel free to do that. I did write it down as an, ex as a, an explainer. Um, there's an image of a birdcage with a person walking away from it, which is which was a powerful state, powerful visual image of what I was feeling about that. So if there's something you want to look into going through deeper, so the first thing is becoming aware. Noticing that your life isn't going the way you want it to in a certain area, maybe it's all areas, maybe it's a certain area. Secondly is what beliefs do you are you running that are not, are not getting you what you want? That's a clue to indicate there's something going on behind the scenes. That's where we start working together if you want to go deep in this area. I really am even more passionate about this because of what I just had experience with myself that I want to share this and support you in having some transformation in your own life. If, if love and relationships isn't working the way you want, I can pretty much, pretty much guarantee it's your subconscious mind doing its magic. Unfortunately, it's not the magic show you want. So if this is something you want to focus on and work on, let me know. I'm going to put a link in the comments for a discovery session with me, a real one. You can click on it and sign up and get a discovery session with me on Get On My Calendar. And with that, um, we can talk and get some um, wheels in motion. Or if you just want to reach out to me on social media, you can send me a message over Facebook as well. Um, or if you're watching this on YouTube, you can do it there. And that's, by the way, this is a Facebook Live first that goes into YouTube later on. So I, I'm, I think I made my point. If you don't face your subconscious mind and ask it what it's about, it's going to keep running more manic pilot and run roughshod over your dreams and ideas and visions. If you want to have what you really want, it isn't about, I can see where I want to go and get there. It's like, what am I doing inside that's stopping me getting there? Because the thing is, you want to set your goals up and your vision and your intention up as well. But if you don't deal with what's inside, it isn't going to happen. I think I made my point clear enough. So your choice is very simple. Stay where you are or get some help to change. <laughs> my, my work and my coaching brand relationships to help you change your paradigms to get what you really want. But we do do the deep work. You have to roll up our sleeves and get in there and do the deep work as well. If that doesn't scare you, good, let's talk. If it does scare you, keep going the way you're going. Um, but I do invite you to reach out and get some support and uh, maybe we can change your paradigm once and for all and get what you want and so you can get what you really want. I should say, get what you really want and get what you really believe to match. And that's the key. So with that, I thank you for watching. This is my Facebook Live I do every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time. It goes onto my YouTube channel as well and also to my business page on Facebook, and I'll give you the links to find me. So if you want to join me live, my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby, is where you find my broadcast at 5 p.m. Pacific time. The replays go to my business page after that, which is barryselby.author, and also onto my YouTube channel, which I invite you to subscribe to, which is Barry Selby. The playlist on there is Messages from the Masculine. And um, so far, 662. There's more content coming. If you have any questions or comments, please feel to put them in the comments below. If you want to share it with anybody to see this, please do so. And with that, I will see you again tomorrow at the same time, same channel. Take care. Bye.